question would be, well, how can we be monitoring it and measuring it better? My great hope is that we start to get not only some of these what's called a post hoc, like someone's getting their triglycerides and someone's getting their HDL, but we're never looking at them together. And there is a powerful synergy to taking these two parts and getting something greater, which is the triglyceride to HDL ratio. So at a minimum, having a separate metric that's taking those for the individual already mm. and having a clinician who's trained enough to point a finger at it, yeah. but then including fasting insulin. And even I would even want to see fasting free fatty acids, the marker that we mentioned yeah. earlier that's a yes. sign of coming from the fat cell. Yep. Yep. One of the coolest metabolic markers is one called the Adipo Insulin Resistance Index, which takes fasted insulin and multiplies it by fasting-free fatty acids. Dang. And it allows us to look at the insulin resistance right at the level of the fat cell, and which is the first tissue that really falls. That is the earliest tissue of the, all the dominoes that are going to start get that tipping test? in. Well, you have to beg your physician Damn. and say, hey, can you please not only check the insulin box, but can you please check the free fatty acid box? Mm. And in the United States, love or hate our healthcare system, it does allow a person to have a little more power over what gets measured than other more centralized healthcare yeah. systems. You just have to know what to ask. You just have to know what to ask and have a clinician who's hopefully open minded and mm. maybe humble enough mm -hmm. to think that the patient may know something they don't know. Yeah. Which is a big it's ask. Phenomenal. The more degrees you put after someone's name, the more the ego becomes settled in stone. How can we increase our insulin sensitivity or re reduce our insulin resistance? Yeah, yeah. It's those meaning the same thing, we just lower insulin. The most powerful lever we can grasp and pull down is lowering insulin. And the best way to do that is by managing macronutrients optimally. In my view, there are four critical pillars that improve insulin resistance. Uh, the three based on macronutrients, one on when to not eat the macronutrients, mm. control carbs, prioritize protein, don't fear fat, and frequently fast. So controlling carbohydrates, I put that first because it's the one that simply matters most. So the more a person can be consuming carbs that are from whole fruits and vegetables and less from carbs that are coming from bags and boxes with barcodes, the better. Now, in the midst of that restriction comes the abundance, which is fill the rest of your plate and stomach space with by prioritizing protein, so high quality, ideally animal source protein, and then don't fear the fat that comes with that protein. Mm. In nature, all protein comes with fat. Okay. And not I only love sausage. Yeah, and, and, and I would say enjoy it liberally. Yes. When humans eat, as much as you and I both have a, a very favorable view of dietary protein, if we just eat protein alone, we do not digest it as well. And it's not as anabolic. Human studies have shown if protein is consumed with fat, we digest the protein better, and we have a greater anabolic response for muscle protein. So if you're eating like really lean turkey or really lean beef, like bison, you're probably not getting the fat in conjunction with it, so you're not going to be able to utilize that protein uh, I, as well. Yeah, I would say be liberal with the fat, yeah. um, even sometimes adding a little to it. In nature, mm. protein comes with fat. That's how we should eat it. And then in the midst of those Macros is that fourth pillar, which is just engage in some form of structured fasting, mm. whether it is a very deliberate time-restricted eating with what we could call mini fasts in a structured 24-hour window or so some 12 degree. on, 12 off. Yeah, absolutely. Eight. There are so many ways yep. to do the time-restricted eating and the intermittent fasting. My only reminder and encouragement would be the more a person looks at longer window fasts, keep in mind this idea that how you end your fast mm -hmm. matters much more than how long you fast. And with that in mind, just when you think about, well, how do I end my fast, go back to the th pillars of my, uh, managing your macros. Protein, fat, yep. Yep. control carbs. And reduce carbs. Yep. Amazing. Right. Exercise is a, is a great um, buffer because the muscles, as, we, as we've noted, are not only the majority of the human body mm -hmm. by mass. But the ability of them to increase their metabolic rate and consume more glucose especially mm. is unlike any other tissue in the body. So resistance training is just like one of the I'm, best ways to I'm get – I'm an enormous yeah. advocate of resistance training. Uh, yeah, so I'm a huge advocate of muscle mass. And, and unfortunately – so maybe I'll, I'll start this little rant another way. If someone were to ask me what is the best exercise to do, my answer is just going to be the one you'll do. So if there's a, a kind of a little old grandma listening to this and think she just likes to go out walking with her girlfriends, you keep doing it. And, and, and the more you can incorporate any modest changes, great. Um, but minute for minute, the best thing is going to be resistance training. Build muscle any way you can. 
And there are lots of ways to do that, as modest as little air squats and push-ups to doing something as high intense as CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Any way you can increase your muscle mass, um, not only the exercise itself is, of course, promoting an enormous amount of glucose uptake, independent of insulin, just as an aside, when the muscle is exercising, it becomes so hungry that it uncouples itself from insulin. It essentially doesn't need insulin to open those glucose doors. It opens them on its own. So you have an insulin independent method for the muscle, the working muscle to just be pulling in glucose as much as it wants. So during the exercise that's building the muscle, you're pulling in a tremendous amount of glucose, which is going to help your blood glucose settle down after you're done exercising. But then the act of increasing your muscle mass means you have more mouths to feed at any given moment of the day and night. So more muscle mass will mean at every moment better glucose control. Better glucose control will suggest improved fasted normal insulin, baseline insulin and dynamics, which is then going to lead to more stable and low insulin, Mm -hmm. thereby improving insulin sensitivity. So minute for minute, uh, resistance training is the way to go. And I would encourage anyone to incorporate any amount of resistance training, whether it's body weight based or kettlebells or high velocity swinging barbells around, yeah. whatever it f- looks like for you, just do something repetitively until it gets uncomfortable mm-hmm. and you can't do more and then you've done it. Yeah. 